I would argue Gamla Stan, situated in Stockholm, Sweden, is quite different from the rest of the capital. Normally, walking around Stockholm, you'd find the kind of things you'd expect to find in a modern capital. Skyscrapers, subways, intricate roads crisscrossing in the most chaotic manner possible. Undoubtedly, specifically designed to cause much road rage as humanly possible. And finally, the doves. Hell bent on shitting on every available and unavailable thing their dumb little minds can imagine. Gamla Stan, in comparison, looks like it's stuck in time. <laughs> no, seriously. If someone from, let's say, the 16th century somehow traveled forward in time and ended up in our miserable, exhausting, COVID-ravaged, insane timeline, they would probably feel right at home. All right, I guess things aren't quite as bad anymore. I mean, 2020 to 2022 are over and done with, thank God. But you get what I mean. At least some of Gamla Stan streets look like they came right out of a medieval movie. And no wonder. Even most of the newer buildings were created as far back as the 16th or 17th century. While a few obviously insanely sturdy buildings have existed since the 1300s. I mean, look at this place. Even the doves appear hesitant about doing their business in the area, as if considering the place too special and unique to soil with their shit. And when an animal with as few fucks given as the dove decides to break character and actually give a fuck, you know something's up. Alright, I admit, you can find the occasional modern oddity marring the landscape, not to mention the countless miniature stores mingling in between the buildings selling everything from jewelry to pretty glass containers to giant stuffed mooses. You know, the kind of useless crap only a curious and slightly gullible tourist would be convinced to buy. And these stores can be found just about everywhere, down every street and corner. Well, except for one. Prestgatan, once known as Helvetesgatan, directly translated to Street of Hell, or Purgatory Road, or any other freaky combination of the words hell and street you could imagine. Now, I do not believe in ghosts. I want to make that abundantly clear. But God, if this place isn't freaky. See this picture here? It was taken during the day, when the sun was high in the sky, and yet it looks like it was taken in the evening. Like, why is it so dark? Why does it look like the shadows are converging in on each other, making the place look even more dreary? And that's not all. Remember all those stores I mentioned before? They tend to attract a lot of people, mostly tourists, I'm guessing. So if you walk around these streets during the day, there's going to be a lot of noise surrounding you. It's uh, inevitable, really. What's freaky, though, is the fact that somehow, for a reason I cannot fathom, the noise just kind of vanishes as you step onto this street. Not immediately, I admit, but as you slowly walk further and further into the alley, approaching the street's only habitable building that also happens to be a dead end, the sound from the outside world steadily subsides until all you can hear is your own steps and breathing. Now, I'm sure there's a logical explanation for this, and I'm sure any skilled architect or just anyone more knowledgeable than me could come up with several explanations for why the alley basically seems to eat sound. But honestly, I, I don't think I would find the street any less creepy even if I had an explanation. Especially considering what I've recently learned about the alley. The street is basically just a couple of high walls framed by a lone house the furthest in. And turns out the city's executioner once lived in that very house. Or uh, at least that's what many believe. It uh, must have been a pretty lonely existence. Considering how dark and depressing the street looks today, it must have been even worse back then. The street feels completely cut off from the rest of the area. And considering how executioners were viewed at the time, and uh, are still viewed today, I would assume, this was probably on purpose. Executioners didn't tend to be of particularly high standing in society, after all, and were often isolated from the rest of the community, both uh, socially and geographically. My point is that if any place was ever haunted, 
and uh, again, I don't actually believe in the supernatural, but if any geographical location on Earth was filled with so much negative energy that it ended up possessed by vengeful spirits, I think it would be this street right here. Now, you might be wondering, passion devotee, stranger on the internet, why do you think this executioner's home specifically would be haunted? Surely there's been literally thousands of executioners throughout history, so what makes this one so special? Well, dear listener, I'm glad you asked, because I actually have one last point I would like to bring to light. You see, the Stockholm bloodbath actually took place on Stortorget in Gamla Stan, which is pretty close to the ones called Hell Street. This particular event is a mess that I really don't want to get too far into, because, well, it's not really what this video is about, but uh, just to provide some context. In November 1520, Christian II is crowned king of both Sweden and Denmark. And like any pompous monarch desiring to cement their reign in history, he throws a massive, lavish party and invites just about anyone of importance. Now, Christian had a lot of enemies. Uh, a real shocker, I know. A powerful man with enemies? Who'd have ever guessed? And uh, one of these was Stian Sture the Younger, who was dead and gone at this point, but his allies still remained. Now, interestingly enough, Christian didn't actually hold any animosity towards these people and consider them former enemies turned friends. See, he was a generous king who famously said at one point that he didn't mind if people believed differently from himself, and that people were free to believe whatever they wanted. <laughs> said, uh, said no king ever, I'm just bullshitting. Christian may have invited his uh, former enemies to the party, promising them safety and forgiveness, but it was all a lie. He was hell-bent on getting rid of any and all competition, so he quickly labeled them as shattare, basically heretics in English, and ordered that they all be... Hmm, how can I say this without getting demonetized? He orders that they be allowed to go to heaven early by having a highly useful body part, not temporarily removed from the rest of their bodies. You know what? I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm not monetized yet anyway, so what's the harm? He decides to have them all executed. So they're led out of the castle, one by one in order of importance, and yeah, nearly 100 people were executed that day, and it's said that in its wake, blood flowed down the streets, traveling along the gutters all the way down to the base of the square. That's why it's called the Stockholm Bloodbath, I, uh, I would assume. Now, why is this relevant? Well, turns out a lone executioner, the same who lived at the end of the so-called Hell Street, single-handedly performed every single beheading. Or at least that's what I'd like to say, but turns out it's not necessarily true. <sighs> God, what a shame. The ending to this video would have been so good if I'd been able to be like, yeah, the Hell Street Executioner killed an obscene number of people, and that's why the place is seemingly haunted. But no, I, I don't like to lie, so I'm not going to. See, the executioner responsible for beheading all those people was actually named Jürgen Hummuth, and uh, I can't find much at all about the dude other than that he did in fact exist at one point. There's no mention of where he lived anywhere, at least not that I could find. Now, don't get me wrong, an um, executioner does seem to have lived here at one point, and that totally could have been this dude considering the timeline. But yeah, there is no real proof this is actually the case. Uh, a rather anticlimactic ending to this video, huh? Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed too.